and we will say the flag salute. If you'll join me, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. All right. We're ready for roll call. Okay. Yes. Uh, there's a lot of background noise, and it's probably coming because everybody's not muted. Um, so, we, in, unless I call your name, I'm going to ask that you move to your um, mute button on your little microphone at the bottom of your screen. So, if you take your mouse to the bottom of your screen, you'll see the little bitty. Uh, microphone. Thank you. Great. So here we go with roll call. Tracy Rowe. Present. Thank you. Dewey Robbins. Present. Carrie Kamladi. Not yet joining us. We'll announce when he joins us. I'm on the phone with him and he's trying to get in. So just one okay. moment with him. Mm -hmm. Um, Melissa LaCrosse has informed us she's ill, so she's being excused from the meeting. Kay Jones, present. We will add Terry to the list of attendees as soon as he comes on. But we will continue. We are to item three, which is review, adjust, agenda, approve agenda, and consent items. I make a motion to approve the uh, consent agenda items. Second it. Thank you. We have a motion and a second to approve and accept to approve the consent items and the agenda as presented. Those in favor, so we'll start. Tracy Rowe? Aye. Dewey Robbins? Aye. K. Jones, aye. And we'll move on to reports. And at this point, um, Hattie, if you'll lead us through the financial and audit information. Thank you. Um, I just want to say thanks to Amber because she did, she was able to work with my financial reports and make them a little bit bigger. So they are presentable. I mean, they're easier to read and they're all the way across. So thank you, Amber. Um, there's really nothing new to report or business as usual. Our revenues coming in, um, a little bit higher than what we budgeted. So that's really good with our property taxes. And, um, is there any questions on the financials? Hattie, I'm, I'm holding off on financials for me uh, in reviewing in light of the, the current circumstances and how I like to review the uh, financials. I think I need another month uh, to make uh, uh, comparisons uh, in order to bring forth positive questions. 
Okay, that worked. Nothing stood out at me. None stuck out at you. Stood out at you? No, everything looked fine. I didn't see anything that jumped out at me. So. Awesome. Thank you. Then I'm going to move on to our audit. So we had our um, interim audit scheduled for the first week of April. And that was pretty unusual. Um, everything was electronic. I did not get to meet our new auditor, Shauna. I got to talk to her a lot over emails. But it worked out. It went really well. Um, we have one page of best practice and exit comments. And it's the it it's identical to basically last year, except for instead of having 10 comments and um, best practices, we only have six. And it basically says the same thing as it did last year. The one thing that they did note was on the bank statements. I do have a check out there for two hundred and seventy five dollars um, that it, the check is a year old. And I have that check ready to be voided. I just haven't done the void process. So um, other than that, the audit went really well. I was really glad that we didn't have to extend it or to change the date. It, it's just one less thing that we all have, to, you know, that that needed to be done. So we just went ahead and, and got it done and, instead of changing the date on it. So um, other than that, that's all I have. Hattie, may I ask a question about that check? Sure. Have we reached out to whoever it was written to to find out why they have not processed that check? Oh, yes. This is Portland State University. <laughs> right? Now, here's their process. So we, pay, we cut a check for $275 for our band to go to um, the band concert up there. Well, if they don't get selected to go and they don't appear, they shred the check. Okay. With, right, without telling the schools that they are not cashed in the check. So we had to call Portland State University, and I said, can you do me a favor? I said, instead of shredding the check, can you just send it back to me so I really know that I can void this check? So they didn't realize what they were doing was causing us a little bit more work and research, but – you know, um, it is what it is. So hopefully in the future, if we don't attend these events, that they'll just send the check back to us. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Anything Hi. else? Thank yeah. you for the report on the audit. Yeah. That is excellent. That was really good. All right. Any other comments? I had to send the meeting ID again to Terry, but hopefully he'll be able to get in soon. Okay. At this time, I'd like to move on to new business and our superintendent update with the distant learning plan. And so, Mr. Kaitner, I'll turn it over to you. Here, I was on mute. Um, thank you. And before I start, um, uh, I just wanted to, to make a quick mention about the audit that these things take so much time and um, uh, Hattie and Barbie do such a wonderful job preparing for these and they had the option to postpone and they said no let's just do it and get her done and uh, I really appreciate that that energy and um, uh, willingness just to to um, um, tackle the the audits and get them done and again they were it was a really good process and one that was mutually uh, appreciated by both um, Jefferson School District and and our auditors. So thank you, Hattie. Thank you, Barbie. Uh, Chair Jones, members of the board, good evening. Um, we are in uh, unprecedented, time, unprecedented times in education, uh, truly, as you know. My report tonight primarily focuses on how we are moving forward with our distance learning model. As you know, Governor Brown first announced school closures on March 12th, uh, the week prior to spring break. At that time, we began designing plans for distance learning, actually, for the remainder of the year. Um, on March 17th, then, she extended the closure until April 28th, and then guidance from ODE had us create uh, a plan for supplemental enrichment instead of distance learning plan. So uh, we started making plans for that. 
On March 30th, we altered course from an enrichment education model to a distance learning model for all. Then on April 8th, she announced the school buildings were closed for the remainder of the school year for students. Each district was asked to create a distance learning plan by April 13th. We took the one we started on March 12th and then completed it. I have provided a copy to you tonight, but I wanted you to know that this is a living document for us and was amended even today. Um, so I anticipate it uh, being updated over the next couple of weeks as we um, um, deal with new questions and get more guidance from OE and, um, and uh, work through challenges. By creating our distance learning for all plan, we are reinforcing our deep commitment to learning and maintaining an educational pathway for students during this critical time. As educators and leaders, we know the value of school and the importance of learning and social connection. Faced with the challenge of school closure, we have an opportunity to provide a new way of teaching and connecting to our students through this distance learning model. Maintaining student uh, to educator relationships will ensure care, connection, and continuity of learning for us and our students. And um, as challenging as this is, uh, there's a lot of excitement, I think, around um, built, coming together as a team, putting this together, and, and uh, serving our students. The key elements for distance learning by, uh, provided by ODE uh, are the following. Every student regularly connects with their teacher. Bullet two, teachers and students prioritize time together to focus on the most important and relevant learning. Teachers, families, and caregivers work as a team anchored in partnership. Bullet four, together teachers and families co-facilitate learning, design consistent routines, and establish the learning environment. Five, Teachers continue to monitor, report, and record each student's progress towards learning goals and standards, encouraging critical problem solving, collaboration, communication, and creativity. Six schools provide multiple flexible opportunities for our high school students in particular to earn credit on their path to graduation. I wanted to highlight those key elements tonight because our plan was based off those. ODE said, this is how we want distance learning to look and be included. And so we took that lens and put our plan together. Um, over the last two weeks, since March 30th, our goals have been one, to reach out to parents and learn who is in, the, who is in need of a Chromebook and who requires access to the internet. Um, in this process, we did an extensive technology survey for all of our families by all three schools under the guidance of our tech director. The findings show that the majority of our families had access to the, have access to the internet. Some needed Chromebooks, while others did not need anything for their children to access, access their education. For those families who needed the internet, 30 uh, Jefferson Elementary families, 10 JMS families, and 21 high school families. Chris Shaw was able to con contact Peak Internet and arrange for two free months of internet for those who fell in, the er in that area that peak services. All families have been contacted and most of them are moving forward with peak to set up service. A few families have chosen to not access the internet and receive their materials in packet form, uh, even knowing that they have potential access to the internet. And a couple who live in apartments uh, have so far been not allowed to, to um, have internet Wi-Fi installed due to their landlord. And we are reaching out to those landlords to see if, if we can uh, make sense of it for them and, and help them out. So um, we're it, it, it can be a Herculean task to make sure everybody has access to the internet. Um, we're actually uh, well ahead and um, in the process of not only serving and helping those uh, families that um, traditionally haven't had them, but also um, providing it for just about everybody that wants one. Uh, our second um, goal was, was to assemble materials for families and catalog Chromebooks for checkout. 
And um, our third goal was to provide ample communication to staff and have them prepared for distance learning, um, being able to access and develop online resources, including planning for all students. Our fourth goal uh, was to arrange the pickup of supplies by families and drop off those to who could, uh, to those who could not pick it up. And let me move here. There we go. Screeching off the scene screen there. Um, it has been a mountain of work, and our administrators are to be commended uh, for the for organizing a very smooth and synchronized pickup and delivery system last week. It went so well. Um, and I, in fact, I want to thank all staff uh, for their support, including the staff who called every family, um, the technology for um, organizing Chromebooks and supporting teachers with their questions and needs and moving us toward an online model. Um, to Lisa Buskirk and her staff for doing an amazing job of feeding families wanting food throughout this past month. For Melody Rossiter and our bus drivers for supporting the delivery of supplies and food. Custodians for making sure our schools are clean before and after staff come in for any reason. Teachers for being really positive and reaching out to students and their families for being organized to deliver instruction today. And just the, I, I have to tell you that it, it, I've heard nothing but really positive, what can I do, how can I help kind of responses. This is an amazing team and I'm so proud uh, to be leading it. Last week, the pickup and delivery went exceedingly well. I went to each school and watched the process. At JES, cars were lined up around the block all day. Uh, well, all day uh, from the periods of, um, I think, 10 to 2 o'clock. <clears throat> and teachers were practicing social distancing and using gloves and masks. Each person had a role, and it was very organized and smooth. Uh, there was music playing. There were signs welcoming families. Uh, it was an uh, exceedingly organized and well-attended event and uh, very successful. Um, for those who did not come and pick up their uh, Chromebooks and supplies, uh, they were delivered the following day by bus uh, to every family. So now every family should have supplies and, and uh, a Chromebook if they desired one. And for those who are uh, seeking internet access uh, with Peak over the next week, uh, we have already engaged with them to um, pick up a, a Chromebook. So when they have that internet access, they'll have they'll be online. Um, this week, the goal for this week is for our teachers to connect with their students. And uh, distance learning began today. Um, and prior to this, it was enrichment. And many other school districts are still organizing and starting later in the week or even at the end of the week. Um, we feel we were able to be prepared to start today, and, and we're excited about that. For those students who didn't get uh, access to online materials, they, they received packets. And so uh, teachers are reaching out to them individually. Teachers are planning for all learners. Uh, we are ensuring English learners and students with special needs. And TAG students have their learning differentiated per their IEP or language ability. And um, so equity is a major focus for us as, and, and it was a major concern for us as we uh, did our planning to make sure that every student received what it is they need to be successful. Our administrators, uh, the, the primary role for them in the coming weeks is to, is to support the needs and well-being of our teachers, to be the key link for communication, information, and support, to meet uh, each, we meet each week on Google Meeting and they meet each week with their staff. Um, they're the key communicators for making sure that staff uh, understand what's expected, but also uh, for staff to say, hey, I'm having this issue, for them to help resolve that. Uh, a lot of details around this plan. I just wanna give you the synopsis. In short, teachers are communicating reg regularly each week with students. Teachers have regular working hours. Communication is done in most cases via Google Classroom uh, or Class Dojo at the elementary school. Those not online receive phone contact. Teachers are maintaining contact logs. Packets are delivered each week. Families are either sending in packets with, with self 
addressed stamped envelopes, or taking pictures and sending to their teachers, or sending packets back to school where it is being scanned and sent back to the teachers. All of this has been orchestrated and organized in, uh, by our principals, and so teachers understand what's happening, families understand how to be successful in this way. Seniors who are on track to graduate as of March 13th are now finished. Teachers are working with them on their next steps towards um, uh, post-graduation. Those who are not on track as of March 13th have been contacted, every single one of them, and they have a plan to be successful. All seniors have been regularly communicated with by Kathy Emmert and Blaine. All guidance comes from ODE and is being communicated um, as soon as we know it. Regarding students in nine through grades nine through 11, concerning credits, grades, et cetera, we are just holding off and awaiting guidance from ODE before we make anything official. Um, things, as you know, change from day, literally from day to day, sometimes within the day. And uh, because this has been a moving target as well, um, ODE said that they're, they are going to be giving us further guidance for grades nine through 11, and it's hoping, hopefully coming this week. Um, once we get that, of course, I will, um, we will update the community and um, schools will up update their students and parents. I'm going to move on at, in a minute to um, the demolition. Uh, before I move on from distance learning, are there any questions for me? I know this is a big topic. Yes, Brad, I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. um, with respects to uh, a platform that is evolving and changing almost on a daily basis, um, what has been your biggest hurdle in being able to accomplish making sure that our district is in line with ODE standards and have we been able to accomplish? Are we lacking anywhere? Thank you. Well, we are not lacking anywhere. In fact, I think uh, we're we're actually well ahead or on 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 right on task. Um, I think the the biggest challenge is um, communication because um, you start to build a, pro a program based on what it is that you hear and learn and the way you're supposed to go. And then that'll change the next day. And so the key is to try to um, wait until you have some definitive guidance before you let everybody know what to do. Um, otherwise you can get everybody send a lot of confusing mixed messages. Um, I think so far we've been pretty successful. Um, again, you know, a lot to uh, uh, the principals for their um, their leadership, their 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 constant contact with staff, um, and we regularly communicate. So um, I think it's been going fine. But I think that's probably one of the challenges because, um, like you said, you know, it is changing um, all the time. And so we've done uh, three. This is our third major change in uh, in, the, in just a span of a couple weeks. And um, and I have to just say again how amazed I am of how flexible the staff has been and how gracious everyone has been with the changes because um, it is difficult, I know. And uh, the other thing is just making sure that we can support our staff through this. I will um, entertain a motion to accept our distant learning plan as it was presented by Superintendent Kapner for the remainder of the 2019-2020 the school year. Um, I, uh, I make a motion that we accept the uh, uh, superintendent's update on distance learning on the distance learning plan for the remainder of the 2019 2020 20 school year. And I will second that motion. At this time, we need to do a vote. Tracy Rowe. 
Aye. Dewey Robbins? Aye. Kay Jones? Aye. Motion carries. So, Mr. Kavner, will you go ahead and tell us about demolition? Sure. Um, I just got a text from Terry. Um, he was asking about IAs. And um, so I have principals uh, communicating with IAs as as the need arises. So they played a huge role in putting the packets together in disseminating information and Chromebooks and um, uh, translating materials. Um, so they're doing quite a lot actually, and we're really grateful for them. Um, moving on to old JMS demolition. Uh, the demolition of the old middle school will be complete by next week. We've saved time. Uh, we've saved a time capsule from the school, and we'll be uh, open. Uh, we'll, we're going to have the opening ceremony in the fall once everyone is back. Don't know what's in there, right? But um, <laughs> but we thought we would uh, have a ceremony just in in in, in any case. Um, and then the historical society asked for a couple decorative glass windows that we're providing to them as well. Uh, so we, we reserve those out. And then uh, the plaques that were uh, saved are going to be um, incorporated as part of the amphitheater as um, so we can see uh, that the middle school, uh, formerly the high school, was in that spot. Um, anyway, we're really excited that uh, the work has moved so quickly and uh, should be done next week. Everything is ready to move forward with our loan. Uh, once the resolution after tonight, um, uh, Hattie's going to move forward with Umqua Bank. Umqua has already uh, been alerted and, and is ready, so our loan will pro be processed shortly. Uh, we're scheduled, we are on schedule to have the amphitheater and the playground at JES completed this summer. So all of that is in process. Um, the playground at JES um, plans are have been drafted and are being um, disseminated to uh, the committee at JES. And uh, Mr. Sullivan is uh, convening a, a committee to look at this and give feedback. So we're right on, on task, uh, on track with what we need to do there. Um, anything, any questions on demolition? Not for me, I've been monitoring from afar. Sounds good, thank you. Um, budgeting, uh, so our SIA budget, you know, we spent all fall on our SIA plan and budget, and it, we, we were extremely excited to have an approved plan and um, uh, being able to fund new positions. Uh, at the moment, we are going to be, uh, I'm going to be writing contingency plans at cuts of 25%. Uh, so a plan B cut 25%, a plan C another 25%, all the way down to zero. I'm, if we are able to salvage any of the SIA money this year, um, it will be uh, very uh, fortunate. I think we're going to end up with zero, if not uh, potentially as much as a half. But um, at this point, I'm holding off on any hiring related to the SIA plan. Um, although this is really sad and uh, unfortunate, it's just a delay. So it's not like it's going away forever. It's it's just you know that it's it's a law that has been passed and and it's it's going to happen. It's just uh, right now we're concerned about keeping our state school fund intact. And fortunately, the state is in a better situation today than it was uh, in 2007. Uh, we have two billion dollars reserve and um there's a lot of unknowns we will know more around may 20th and everybody's just kind of in a um, holding pattern and for us and for me that means that um i'm doing two things concurrently i'm going to be presenting a budget to the budget committee as if this COVID-19 thing wasn't here. So you'll see a, uh, a full budget for SIA, for example. Um, and you will see a, a full budget based off of um, that we've been planning. 
uh, assuming that all of our money comes in. And the reason I'm doing that, as you recall, um, we need spending authority. And so if money, if revenue comes in higher and if we have, um, or if we don't have the cuts that we're anticipating, then we need to be able to, you know, spend our budget and hire our people. Um, so that's on one end, I'm doing that. On the other, I'm um, writing or continuing to keep and maintain a very conservative budget, um, uh, holding on to as much money as we can. Um, I've asked staff to hold off on POs and to recall those. Um, and uh, for the remainder of the year, um, we have savings and sub costs, that kind of thing. And, and I'm just going to be um, running a pretty tight ship over the next few months so that we can um, have a, 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 as uh, much of a beginning fund balance as we can. Um, again, not a whole lot more to say on that in terms of details because we're uh, just waiting as well and as everybody else, but wanted to give you kind of an update as to where we stand. Any questions? No. Nope. Okay. Um, that is my report for tonight. Thank you. Um, we are down to item seven, which is board comments. Um, and, and on our um, agendas, one of the things that was mentioned is our next regular board meeting is May 11th. Um, our virtual budget committee meeting training will be April 22nd at 6.30 for the budget committee, which includes the board and our five community members. Um, the other thing I would like to do is remind our community that's tuning in during the streaming that you may make comments through the chat area on, um, or you may email Amber Hopkins. And um, we want to remember that we'd love to hear from you in terms, she will share what your chat, what you send her. We're asking that you please include your name and your address. And we wanted to remind you that the board does not hear complaints about specific staff or personnel during an open meeting. If you have those complaints against personnel, the board or the chair, we're asking you to go through the complaint process. But we would love to hear your comments. Any other board comments? Not from me. All right. Do we any comments? No, everything seems to be uh, going as uh, best as uh, it can at this point. So, I, you know, just uh, appreciate everybody jumping in and doing the best they can in, in unprecedented times. Thank you. So, Amber, are there any public comments at this time? All right. Seeing none. I shall adjourn this meeting at 7.04 p.m. Thank you for coming and thank you for the business that we needed to get done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night, everybody. Thank good you. Night. Bye. 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 Bye.